All right, just in time for Valentine's Day over the weekend, John Markoff, New York Times reporter and author of Machines of Loving Grace, wrote about the search for a computer voice that people would actually like. Joining us to talk about the voices of our machines and devices is John Markoff with his real non-computerized voice. Welcome, John. Hi, you guys. <laughs> So you write that it's not yet possible to create a computerized voice that's indistinguishable from a human voice for anything long than the short phrases uh, in our GPS. Uh, why is that? Uh, it, technically, it's hard. Uh, it's uh, challenging uh, because of uh, particularly a subfield within the world of artificial intelligence and speech synthesis, which is referred to as prosody, um, the ability to capture inflection and emotion in a human voice. And that's sort of the thing that gives us as humans the cues to understand that we're speaking to another human and not a robot. Uh, and, and progress has been made. And I simply started with the, the simple question, um, is there an uncanny valley for speech in the same way there's an uncanny valley for uh, graphics, uh, animated features. Um, I think uh, the term was actually coined by a Japanese uh, researcher and scientist in the 1970s. And uh, the idea was that as you get more and more real with computer animation, you reach this spot or this uh, quality that looks creepy. The eyes don't work right. The face doesn't work right. And uh, you have to get through that uncanny valley before you can be absolutely realistic. And the animation guys are getting there, and I wonder what the speech guys were doing. This reminds me of when I was when I was younger. One of my favorite video games was a game called Zork, and it was one of the really really early examples, uh, at least in the in the arcades uh, growing up, of synthesized speech. And I remember thinking, and you never necessarily thought that it sounded like a human. At that point, I think you were just amazed that it was saying anything and that it was a robot and it was talking in your language. <laughs> but I wonder if then we would hear what, you know, let's say Google, uh, you know, Google now puts out when I, when I ask it to, to give me directions somewhere, I wonder if we would hear then what we hear now and think it sounds like a human just based mm -hmm. on the sheer fact that it's so advanced. But sometimes like I, li I listen and I talk, I use it all the time on my device and it's this like the monotone inflection aspect of it. It's, kind of there it's it's so it's come so far but you just want a little bit of variation a little bit of variability in where it's kind of hitting its inflection points and it always seems to kind of deliver at the same kind of flat line jason if, if you're going to go back to zork <laughs> you probably remember a game company called infocom in the early 80s of text adventure games gorf, gorf yeah uh, oh. it, it was um it, and Zork, right? It was, it was. Was it Zork? So Zork was the. You know, I, I got it. I get it mixed up. And Creamy Korkov actually uh, corrected me here. I get Zork oh. and Gorf always mixed up. But yes, same era, same era entirely. Sorry about that. Infocom was a Boston-based text adventure game company that had the slogan that was the best graphics are in your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. You know, that was true for me for the longest time. It was why I would go out and buy every new video game machine to see how close they were gotten. And they were getting to, you know, the best graphics not being in my head. And I think somewhere between the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, we, we crossed over and the best yeah. graphics are no longer in my head. Yeah, fair enough. So that begs the question. I mean, like, is, you know, is our, is my Amazon Echo like a better assistant than, you know, or a better member of the family than an actual member of my family? I mean, what happens when like, cause I find her voice to be almost, you know, it's a little silly and, and I like it. I don't want it to be any more human. I don't want, I guess what I'm saying is I don't want her to replace me as the mother of my children anytime soon. <laughs> so talk a little bit about what we expect from devices once their voices get better. Well, so the, the question is, will you be able to cross over? And, and uh, you know, from talking to speech researchers, I think it's, it, it's not gonna happen uh, anytime immediately, but we probably will at some point be able to make machines that you you as a uh, human can't tell you're not talking to a machine after an extent. I mean, it's kind of a Turing test-like question. I mean, for me, um, the, the obvious thing is that these technologies will be obviously misused like every other computer technology. And what happens the first time your mother calls you and she tells you she forgot your, her password and will you tell her what it is, except it's not your mother. It's a machine that sounds oh, like wow. your mother. I'm yeah. sure that kind of stuff will happen. <laughs> Um, you know, this, this, this is inevitable, right? Um, and there's also the trust question. I mean, I, most of the people I spoke to said that uh, the Amazon Echo right now is, is one of the best or not, if not the best example of synthesized speech and getting close to human qualities. 
Um, and so you run into the all the issues that were raised in the movie Her mm -hmm. uh, with Samantha, uh, the operating system. And, uh, you know, should you trust that machine? What, uh, you know, what, what, that machine is not a human, even though it sounds like a human. And should you interact with it like, like it is a human? I, you know, I wrote uh, a couple months ago about a Microsoft experiment in China called Zhao Ice, which is a chatbot. And Zhao Ice now has the voice of a 16-year-old girl. And unlike the IBM folks who designed Watson to have a particular kind of voice, uh, Zhao Ice is a different experiment with Microsoft, and it's intended to have uh, this conversational quality. And it has 20 million followers, 10 million intensive followers. 25% of them have said they I have typed I love you to Zhao Ice. <laughs> you, you, you run into lots of issues beyond just speech. So what about, I mean, how close are we to her or to like Ex Machina, like, you know, Eve actually, you know, having the voice that sounds human? Yes. Well, so you've had, you're interacting with um, uh, with Amazon Echo and, and right now for very small snippets, for short conversations, it kind of works. I mean, you're already mm -hmm. slightly worried about your children. Um, <laughs> but what, what I found when I went, I was in China recently and I actually saw a longer demonstration of Zhao Ice. And I was kind of surprised that it, it it ended up being more like a Potemkin village than I thought it would be. I, From having talked to people, I thought it was going to be more compelling than when I actually saw the demonstration. I was a little disappointed. It was much more scripted. And, you know, in terms of uh, passing the Turing test and being a, a real companion, uh, I think it probably works better for teenagers than adults right now. Um, but, but uh, you know, where I think these things are going to come increasingly for most com commercial interactions, you know, we're going to be dealing with proxies for humans, whether it's, you know, uh, chatbots or FAQ bots or, uh, you know, s technical support lines. Uh, increasingly, there will be uh, machine voices on the other side of the conversation. Uh, do, do, we, do we still need this? uncanny valley like is that something that the people creating these uh, devices creating these voices are they still sort of building that in because we know uh that, that we still need it well i talked to a range of the designers um and so ibm uh, in designing watson was looking for a particular effect and they actually did not want their system to be too human but they wanted it to be trustable and they were looking for a particular effect and and, and they found it but then on the other hand I spoke with the uh, designers at an Israeli company called Imperson, and they're really, uh, you know, looking for ways to build avatars for politicians. So you could have a Donald Trump bot or a, uh, you know, a Cruz bot or a Rubio bot that would be on Facebook and that anybody would be able to chat with the politician and it would sound like the politician. And uh, or a celebrity, name your celebrity. Any celebrity who wants to have a presence on Facebook or in social media could have a uh, ultimately visual, but pretty soon a spoken presence to allow people to interact with them. That's that's just a step away. Well, uh, John, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Machines of Loving Grace was an amazing book. I, I read it last fall. It's uh, still available. Um, you can also listen to it, have your Amazon Echo read it to you. She will not read it to you in her normal voice. She It's a, an excellent reader. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, John Markoff is a senior writer for the New York Times Science Section and author of Machines of Loving Grace, The Quest for Common Ground Between Humans and Robots. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, John.